Now, Lord, you can let your servant go in peace, because my eyes have seen the Savior of the world. These were the words that today we record from the voice of Simeon the prophet, after he waited and prayed that God will give him the chance to see this day when he will hold in his arms that Savior that the Holy Scripture spoke about. In the first reading today, we saw two people, Abraham and Sarah. They were advanced in age, and they were waiting for God to fulfill through them the promise. Remember what we said in the second reading, how God asked Abraham to do very, very extraordinary things, to leave his hometown, to go 70 miles away from his hometown to Ur, and there he promised to give him an heir. And this heir will be uh, the beginning of a great generation, like the sky, like the star of the sky, and the, shoe, and the sand of the shoe. But you know, Abraham was 75 years old when he began this journey, and now years has passed. And so God came to have a dialogue with Abraham, and Abraham said, Lord, I did what you said but the fulfillment of your promise is not being done. Don't worry, don't fear, because I will fulfill it. Because I want to show that not you, but me, who is working through this great event. Although your Sarah is barren, she cannot have children, I will make sure that I will steer in her womb, and I will make her fertile, and I will give her a baby, which she did, which she did have, and they name him Isaac. And then we go in the Gospel today and we find that that prophecy was fulfilled. Was fulfilled because Abraham was the father of a great generation. And if we look at the genealogy of Jesus, we see that Abraham is the one who uh, generate um, Isaac, Isaac have Jacob, Jacob, and continue on. And then we see the fulfillment of that promise come. When Simeon, with the baby in his arms, gives thanks to God from another woman, who although she was not barren, she was called by God for her virginity. And God sent his messenger and tell her, don't be afraid, you are going to conceive, you are going to have a son, and you will name him Jesus. So again, the fulfillment of the promise is fulfilled in the Gospel today. But today I would like to focus my few words today on family life. Family life today is being tortured and being, you know, uh, as we say, being abused by all media and even other things in life. And we see that married life today is not what it used to be. Today we look at the family of Nantra and say, it cannot be. Look at our families, divorced and sometimes even separated, and even sometimes I even live together, they are not happy. What is the answer to this? And the answer was in the opening prayer. If we find faith in our families, and we find love, everything is possible. Is there any faith in our family today? No. Our young people, they don't want to know why church. They don't want to know, know about faith. Our young people think that they know it all. And they, so they want to do it on their own. And what they do, instead of looking at that God who loved them so much, they search for another God. And their God to them is money. Their God is drugs. Their God is alcohol. Their God is parties and have a good time in life. Because tomorrow never comes. This is what they base their future on. And when all this is done, they find themselves that they are so empty. In fact, not all they are empty, but they are in trouble. Because they spend too much, more than they have coming to them. Do they have love? Unfortunately, the love that we have is artificial. God forbid that husband on the anniversary of marriage does not send a card to their or his wife or bring a flower. God forbid if they, they, don't, don't for, they forget the birthday of each other. But that is not love, dear people. 
What is the true love? The true love is what Jesus said. There is no greater love than this. Then one lay down his life for the one he loves. Are they ready, husbands, to lay down their life for their wives? And vice versa? Wife towards her husband? If we don't have the two foundations, they are people, family life is in trouble. And that's why today we are going to say, how can we, how can we restore that beauty of what God himself saw it so beautiful? If we look at the life of God, we see that God lived in a family of Trinity. If we see what God wants to do, he sent his son to be born in the family of Nazareth. And even before he left us, he formed us into a church. Claimed that his father is our father. And from his sacred heart, he gave us the church. The foundation of our source by which we are going to be saved. And he asked us to call each other brothers and sisters. So the idea of family is not invention of man, but it is the invention of God. And if God loves so much the family, who are we to destroy what God has done so beautifully? You say, but Father, we cannot be like Mary and Joseph and the child Jesus because we have so much to do. Well, let us begin now with the preparation for marriages. This is something that I don't say publicly, but I say it. I tremble when a couple come in front of me for marriage. I do. Because they have time for everything. They have time to go to Cancun for their honeymoon. They have time to go and see different halls. They have time to go and see what kind of pictures and flowers they go. They go for the gowns. They have time for everything. Oh, my dear Lord, you don't tell the bride that you're not going to go and see the tuxedos and to order them or rent them. Oh, God forbid that you don't put a deposit on the hall. But when you tell them that you, don't, you have to go to Precana and there's $200 for the church, $200? My dear Lord, what is $200 for you? You are putting $10,000 for a hall. You are putting another $10,000 for the food. You are putting another three, four thousand for the pictures. You are putting another two thousand, three thousand to go on honeymoon. And you see that two hundred is too much for the church? Turning the heat on and the electricity on for the air condition? For people that sometimes not even dark in the church? They have time for everything. And when you tell them we need to meet, oh, they find all excuses. Well, Father, I work, I cannot make it, I cannot make Pretena. But then they have time to go for a weekend to Atlantic City. They have time to go for movies. They have time to go all over the, the creation. But they have no time to prepare for marriage. And you know what they say? If you do not do your homework, you are going to be sorry. Because when the teacher is going to mark and give you a, 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 a grade, she's going to fail you. And the same thing with us, with life. We cannot pretend that we are going to harvest what we never have sown. And why Precana? Precana is a tool by which those people who are presenting give you food for thought. Did you ever thought of budgeting, dear people? Which is one of the, mis one of the big mistakes today in our young people. Our young people want to be begin their marriage life what their mother and father has accumulated in 40 years. They want the house, they want the furniture, they want this, they want this, they want this. You are just beginning life. How can you are going to you say, bite on all this and then you are going to ask that you're not going to be in trouble within two, three years? Of course you are going to be in trouble. 